Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to create a drawn effect on our SVGs using only CSS. This is quite common throughout the web, especially on um, personal blogs where the person will have like a stroke of their name and they'll create a drawn effect just using CSS. A lot of people these days are using like the Greensock library, but um, there's no real need to import such a big library just to create this drawn animation. So I'm just going to go through how we can create this um, drawn animation in uh, Code Sandbox. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can see I've included the link down here. So I'm going to work in on this also so you can code along while I'm doing it. And then at the very end, I will delete the changes that I, I've done. So you will just have what I have right here and not the, not the final version. So if we just look at our SVG first, you can see I've set a few box on it. Um, Basically enough, just setting the dimensions. We have a group here, we've set a stroke. You can't, I just uh, a little thing to know is you can't create a drawn animation without a stroke because if you don't have a stroke, what do you animate? Uh, and then for the stroke width, I have 0 0.5. I might just even change that to 0 0.3. I think is a little bit better, okay? We then have a fill of black. The, fi the fill is just these little parts here, so if you set this to none, you see that's our that's our fill. So let's just set this back to none. What we will be doing is we will be drawing out this these kind of strokes here, and then we will also do a little animation at the end that will fill in our SVG, which is uh which is quite nice. Okay, so we fill rule non zero, which is just good practice to include it. Here's our paths. Uh, we're not going to delve into exactly what all this stuff means. It, it can be a little bit complicated, but uh, if you're interested in SVGs and how to animate them and stuff, understanding how this is working is just gives you a massive advantage. So let's get cracking on creating our animation so we can head over to our CSS file. In the CSS file, we just have some basic styles. We just just click on the center, just center SVG, and then we've also set some dimensions on our SVG. So when I'm creating a drawn animation, the first thing I always do is I think about what do I want to draw. So here is I want to draw out these paths. So then in my CSS, I do SVG path. So now I've targeted in on my paths. So when it comes to drawn, creating a drawn animation, we have to use a property called stroke dash offset and a stroke dash array. We set these to zero, but what I've worked with this SVG before, so what we need to actually set them to is 210. Now we can head over to the docs here on stroke dash array, and it says the stroke dash array attribute is a presentation attribute defining the pattern of dashes and gaps used to print or paint the outline of a shape. So for me, that was always a little bit confusing. So instead, what I do is I'm actually just going to set this to none because it's easier to explain what's going on. So you can see my my SVG has actually disappeared. And if we were to do this, you can see that the the strokes are back in. So when it comes to setting these values, what I like to do is I like to set it to the lowest amount I can with all the strokes disappeared. So if I was to set this to say ten like so and come back in you can see i can still see bits and pieces of my my stroke there we'll set it to 100 you see again i'm seeing less and less so for me if i do 200 we're like ah nearly there and then i just do 210 honestly that is not the most scientific way or the most professional way but I've used this everywhere and it's never failed me and I just love doing it. It's really easy. I'm not having to get into calculating the length of the strokes and anything like that. That's why I work with it. You can look into it more yourself if you want. But for me, it's it's not time well spent. As you can see, our, our drawn animation at the end will still be class even without even without setting those. Um, even without like scientifically calculating what values these should be. So with that done what we need to do next is well let's actually just put our fill back in here like so so our fill is back in our stroke is still gone um i want to again i just want to get rid of my fill and i do fill opacity i do fill opacity zero rather than fill none because if you set fill none you can't animate back in the fill as you will see in a little bit 
So we can start off by creating our animation. So if you haven't worked with CSS animations before, when you want to define an animation, you just say at keyframes, uh, and then the, it knows that you're defining an animation. You give it a name. I call mine dash in, or even just call it draw. So, and what we want to do is we can give another thing called two. We want to animate this guy, which is our stroke dash offset to be um, zero. So we can copy it, head on down. Okay, and then we want to use our animation now because we've just used so much effort creating it. So uh, we can say animation. Um, yeah, code sandbox is inserting a lot of stuff here that I don't want. So we can say what animation do I want to use. I want to use draw. How long should it be? I want it to be 10 seconds and I want to say forwards. Forwards means that when the animation finishes up, it will, when it stops, it will end there. It won't go back to the start, if you know what I mean. So it just did it there, but we'll, we'll look it again. So I save. Let's just trick off, kick off save. So you can see it draw. Now, how cool is that? And that only took this bit of code here. So you can see already why people are using big JavaScript libraries to create these animations. I don't really know why, because you can do them so handily in CSS. So as you can see, our SVG still isn't looking the way we want it to look. We're going to create another animation with our keyframes. And this one is fill in. So this is the same as above. But this time we will set our fill opacity to be one. And oh, I forgot to apply it. I was actually waiting for it to happen there. Like the computer knows what to do next. Anyway, so animation. Want it to be fill in. Let's say it will, it will last uh, say two seconds. We need to give it a delay of 10 seconds and forwards. Now, here, like, why the hell are you delaying your animation 10 seconds? Because I need this one to finish first. I want this to finish and then the fill in to happen. Like this. Okay, so again, that's why we're using fill opacity because you could animate in the fill. If you were to use a fill none or something, you could set it here to be like display, like fill black, but then it just all of a sudden turn black. You don't get the, the cool effect. So we can just look at that again. Uh, let me just do this. So you see, we're drawing off all our three paths. It comes around, it loops up, it comes up here. And then finally, we have our fill opacity coming in. And that is all there is to um, drawing out an SVG. Uh, again, when you have like the bigger SVGs, this will be more complicated. And my, my advice for when you do have a huge SVG is to uh, take different parts of the SVG and focus on animating a drawn effect on those different parts. And then maybe like use delays and stuff. And then maybe in that case, use green sock or something because you have this thing called timeline and it just saves you lots of headaches when you're doing these animations. So for me now, that is that is the tutorial finish. I would like to say thank, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Now go and create kick-ass animations on the web. Thanks.